she might be crazy, but at least Chris is definitely in danger. For sure. And her intuition wasn't completely wrong. Well, that's every black woman. Every black woman has a pretty good intuition, right? I think so. What we call it is discernment. That's it, Shondo, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, what up, though? Welcome to the party. My name is Diara Kilpatrick, and this is the Diara from Detroit After Show. So each episode, we will be diving into all of the questions that we know you have and some of the questions that you didn't even know you had. Our first guest is my good friend and castmate, Brian Terrell Clark, who plays Mr. T. What up, though? What's up, friend? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh, there's a lot going on, and, and we have just begun. I know, we yeah. just begun, yeah. and and we've already seen the whole movie. Look, it's a wild ride. It's a wild ride. Um, buckle up. So let's set the scene. Okay, so the series opens three months after Diara has broken up with her affluent husband, so that's a big ouch. Yeah. And she has to return to her childhood home. And you know they say you can't go home again. Well, or can you go home again? You're a little too old to be going home <laughs> again, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Right, but she gotta do what she gotta do. So she goes to her Detroit neighborhood where she's juggling the challenges of teaching at a Detroit public school, underfunded. Which we know because both of our parents in real life are, were, teachers. were teachers, right? Yes. And she is trying to put her past behind her, trying to put her marriage behind her because right. her friends are telling her it's time to move on. Let it go. So she jumps into the world of dating and Tinder only to be ghosted by her first Tinder connection. Yeah. So this prompts her to embark on a quest to uncover the truth, to get some answers. So we get into a mystery. It's There's a, mystery. a lot going on. Let's see if we can get to some of the things. So Brian, what's your favorite scene in the episode? Oh, my favorite scene in the episode is when you run up on danger in his house. Mm. It's a great scene. I guess my question for you is like, is this just who Diara is? Mm. Is this, it, I mean, we know she's Captain Extra, mm -hmm. but is she that extra? Is she just running up in like, No, in I think this house? is. I think this is new for her. I think she's going through a tough time in her life uh -huh. and she's at her breaking point. Yeah, and you always take that kind of crazy out in the wrong place, right? So That's... you're upset about this missing guy. You're upset about your husband. And of Absolutely. course you take it out on this man who's, who's, you know, he spreading rumors. Of, he's spreading rumors around the neighborhood that you got a dirty house, but the truth of the matter is, but your house was that. dirty. He did that <laughs> after he broke into the house, though. He did break so into your house. it's pretty messed up. What I appreciate is that she, even in the midst of her being overwhelmed and even in the midst of her, like, letting that level of anger out, she was still aware of the fish on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> that was the compassion. She saved the fish. My favorite theme, you know, I have to say I really love the opening. Ooh, it's I a strong opening. I think it's really visually dynamic. I have to shout out Chioke Nessor, our director, and Matt Edwards, our DP. That was really their brainchild. I really wanted to have the series open in a dynamic way, and I wanted people to be immediately pulled into how she was feeling, and so that sort of constant moving, that constant, like, she can't rest, right? She has insomnia, and so we just wanted to keep the camera moving and to kind of really help the audience feel that vibe and really get into it. And also, just let people know right off the bat that this is something that you haven't quite seen before. That's what I was gonna say, because I feel like what you helped to set up is a new visual language mm. for the way we were gonna tell this story. I mean, I've been telling everybody that I look at this show as like Diara in Wonderland, right? Mm -hmm. or, or Diara in like Detroit land. Mm -hmm. And so right away, where we find your character is already falling down the rabbit hole. Absolutely, her world is literally spinning upside down. And then you make us spin upside down with you. Okay, so let's break this episode down. All right. Okay, so the turning point is definitely when she goes on the Tinder date with Chris. Without a question. They have this amazing night. They have even better sex. She's she's expecting the follow-up date to be amazing, and what happens? Ghost. He ghosts her. Fully. No call, no text. The, no nothing. The rudeness, right? I mean, she don't really know this man. <laughs> I just think it's okay to smash on the first date if that's what you want to do, yes. you grown. But setting expectations afterwards, well, I she, don't know. She has know. expectations aplenty, so she's yeah. like, I need to find him. She's going to track him down. Have you ever been ghosted? I've been ghosted one time in my entire life. Ooh. And you know what's crazy? It, was, it wasn't somebody I was dating, it was a friend. And I oh, think that hits a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily it happened in a, in a time in my life where I feel like I was mature enough to really understand that people's actions are a reflection of their self. Mm -hmm. Has really nothing to do with you. So you weren't ever like, I need to understand this. Like, I need to know what I did or well, what I'm the like, issue was. Yeah, I'm like you and DR, the character. I think I like to understand things, period, right? I right. need some level of, of 
closure, right. I think, right? But sometimes, to be honest, you gotta find that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that was my first lesson in, you're not always gonna get the answers you're looking for. And mm -hmm. in life, sometimes, that's okay. And that's what happens here. And that's what, well, I don't <laughs> know if it happens here. Well, she's looking for Chris. DR ain't giving up. She gonna well, get no. some answers. She's relentless. And now on this new adventure, she ain't stopping until she gets some answers. Right. Yeah. And I love that. I love that about I her. I love that she's given herself permission to do that. The whole first act, she's kind of wallowing in her feelings. Very much so. And then she finds her power and everything happens so quickly that she doesn't really have time to think it through. No, but she's good on her, she's fast on her feet, which I appreciate. Of course, she's a Detroit girl. Yeah. So, here's another question. Do you feel like there are different kinds of ghosting or do you feel like it's all general? So there's ghosting occupationally, there's ghosting emotionally, there's ghosting spiritually, I feel mm -hmm. like. There's different types of, types of ghosting. It's all about communication. And anytime you stop communicating, that's ghosting to me. Yeah, okay. We've solved your problems, you're welcome. I have so many favorite lines from this first episode. What is your favorite line from this episode? I have a couple too, but I do love the sexy vagrant run. <laughs> That's a thing for me. I feel like it was around the time Kanye's fashion line was really popping. I was yeah. like, we are really in a sexy, vagrant moment. And I feel like it's different, too, as a dark-skinned woman. Sometimes I huh. feel like we can't get in on sexy, vagrant. I feel like if our braids go fuzzy, people start, like, handing us loose change. My other favorite line in this pilot, which I can't believe I'm admitting, is... I didn't write. <laughs> it is the line, I may be gay, but I'm still a yeah, yeah. And you, I don't know if you remember this, before you were cast, <laughs> you said this to me at a dinner party I'm, one time. I'm sure I did. I have no and idea what we were talking about, though. That resonated with me so hard because sometimes as marginalized people, we get painted as one, one thing. thing. Yeah. You know, you are black, you are gay, gay. and this is you, what you are, are whatever. And I thought that the that the modulation of who you are as a queer black man, but also identifying as a like, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You know, my mama was a was a school teacher, yeah. like your mom was. But um, you're from Baltimore. Yeah, but I'm from Baltimore. My daddy was a drug dealer. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Turn, turn drug addict. But like, <laughs> but it's one of those things where I think that like. Do not get it twisted. Yeah. I'm very much a man, and yeah. just because you know I'm queer, don't don't disqualify your ass whooping. Yeah, and you know I feel that saying? I feel the same way. Like because I'm articulate, and I feel like there's some. Ref My mother made me go to etiquette school. You know, there's your some mother refinement. made you go to etiquette school. Oh yeah, I went to etiquette camp. She thought a woman had to learn how to walk, sit, stand. That's also very Detroit, because that's very a Motown Detroit. thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's what my mother said. Like, the, the ladies of Motown, that's what you sort of need to emulate out Facts. in the world. I but, love that. But don't get it twisted. Don't come at me sideways. She a girl from Detroit. Yeah. 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 I think that, that you've done a great job of, like, creating characters that kind of subvert their, their stereotypes. Yeah. Why was that important to you, you think? I always say I'm a complex black woman born of complex black women. I think the people that I've known haven't been one dimensional. And so I don't know why we put ourselves on television and then decide that that's when we get to be, that we're gonna be one dimensional. I like to show all the sides. And and also because there are characters, Moni, Dan Danger, they might be the most stereotypical characters on the page. Of course, you know, Claudia and John breathe so much beautiful life for into sure. them. For sure. But on the page, they could be the most stereotypical, stereotypically Detroit, whatever that means to you characters. And so what I wanted to do was load them up with the most specificity about from my life. Right. And even Danger, who's robbing houses, I was something say, I've that first, never that done. First scene, I mean, <laughs> um, he's he's talking to you about therapy. And right. You would never look at that character and think that he goes to therapy. I gave them all my quirks. Yeah. So, so you know, dangers in therapy, trying to heal his childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. Hello, anybody else? Right. <laughs> so, Brian, let's discuss the million dollar question. What's that? Do you think Chris ghosted her, or do you think that something else is going on? I mean, we saw the brother get thrown in a van at the end of this first episode. I think genuinely he has some connection to you, and I think we are literally about to go on the ride of these characters' lifetime. I yeah. mean, I think they're tapping into something that's a little above their regular lived lives. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the origin of people becoming like private investigators and like figuring out where this guy went. Mm -hmm. It was just supposed to be a date. And now we like looking for like a missing person. And does he feel the same way about Diara that she feels about him? No, that's the guy. Cause he still could have ghosted her and then got kidnapped. Yeah, what if you, what if you find him and he's still like, 
I had a good time, but it's, it's not a match. <laughs> but no. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, check out episode two, which is available right now on BET Plus, and then make sure you stop back through and chop it up with us on the DR from Detroit after show. Uh -huh.